Hi and welcome to video number three in this series of uh, getting up to speed with, with Onshape. In the previous videos we looked at how to get started with a, with a software uh, and then how this three-dimensional world kind of works. I had a quick look at the tools and uh, I'm making a, a really simple part. In this video today we're actually going to make our first part proper. So the first part that, that we actually want. And we're going to create a, a keyring, a personalized keyring. And hopefully from that, we can then 3D print them all. So we're going to, we're going to design a part virtually, you know, a solid part. Uh, and then we'll be able to uh, export that and actually create a, a physical part that, that, we can, that we can hold and, uh, and hopefully admire. Uh, now, before we get started, you may have noticed that, that up to now you've been working in inches. And if you haven't uh, found the way of changing that, that, the best way to change your default settings is to go up to your name here. Obviously, yours won't be Gary May, or it shouldn't be Gary May. If you click that drop down, it says Manage Account. Okay, so we click to manage our account. This gives us all our account settings. Uh, and there's various things that you can put in here. You can put a little picture of yourself in there if you want to uh, to personalize your account. But the third one down here is we have preferences. And this is where we can change all the, the, the way we like to work. Okay, so if you like to work in Chinese, you can work in Chinese. I wouldn't recommend it. But the one we want to do is units. Okay, so here we, here we have units. Mine are already set. Um, but we can have feet, inches, yards, if you really want to. But as we're engineers, we work in we work in millimeters, uh, we work in degrees, and we work in kilograms. Okay, rather than uh, uh, rather than ounces and pounds. And if you think it's difficult working in millimeters and kilograms, it's a whole lot harder working in ounces, pounds, yards, etc., etc. Okay, and then simply go down and uh, what do we do? We save. Uh, there we go. Save unit settings. Okay, it will say settings updated. Uh, I'm not sure the best way of getting out of this. I think simply just go back and back, and that should that should take you back in there. Okay. So so to say to say today we're going to make uh, we're going to make a key ring. You can either create a whole new work studio or if you want to you can see I've got a number of parts going on here you can simply click create new part studio okay and that will create another tab another tab down here okay so we're just working this is my part studio 3 at the moment we can we can rename it okay so we're going to start off with a sketch if you remember we we select a plane for this uh, and then we say, yep, I want to draw a sketch on here. So up in the top left, we click Sketch. And it will come up with this little box to say that Sketch 1 is now on this on this plane. We right-click. If I right-click properly. And we view Normal to Sketch Plane. And that brings this sketch plane in front of us. Okay. And if you press the mouse wheel down, you can drag and pan to get it just where you want it. Now, the way we draw with this software, the way we create things, is much looser than than you would perhaps with other with other software. So we don't tend to draw every little detail on. Okay, so we will we will basically design a rough shape, and then we will add the details and the features into that. So to start with, we're simply going to create the outline of our keyring shape. And if there's one good tip I can give you, it is to keep your sketches simple. It's much better to have a number of sketches with different features on, rather than trying to put every little bit of detail into one sketch. Okay? The software prefers it, it builds it easier, and it's much easier for, for editing things. Okay? It, otherwise it just gets really confusing. So if we go to this drop down here, we don't actually want corner rectangle, we're going to go to the drop down. And we want a center point rectangle. So we're going to snap the center to here. So we click once and release. And then we simply drag the mouse out without holding a button. 
and I, I don't care what size it is really to start with just 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 click and put it there because it, what it does it gives us these little dialog boxes and it allows us to enter the dimensions in directly and if we type 40 and because we've set the default to millimeters we don't have to keep typing mm so we simply 40 click enter and it'll update that to 40 uh, and then the vertical one is 25 okay so I can zoom into that to give me a, a better look at it uh, and what I want is to have a little triangular piece over here that's going to form the section that, that clips onto your your keys or uh, or your lanyard if you wear one okay? so all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a little reference point so I'm going to go to the point command click that and as you can see it's it's helping me so it's telling me it's going to snap horizontal to that part because as engineers we tend to make things symmetrical okay so again I'm not too worried where I'm going to put it as long as it is horizontal with this point here okay so I've now got just just a point just a little reference point here and well, I want that point to be 10 millimeters from this line or from that point okay? so if I go to the dimension command up here click dimension I can click on this point this line and it will give me that dimension. So it's telling me what it is at the moment. But if I click again, I can now again directly input 10, don't need to put mm, and hit enter, and it will it will dimension that for me. Okay. So I now go to my line command up in the top left here. Then I can click on that corner, it snaps to that corner, snaps me into here, snap, and snap there we go and it goes gray because I have a I have a complete area now you, you can leave it as two separate areas but when we extrude it out we'll have to extrude that area and that area so I think it's just nicer practice to get rid of the lines that that we don't really want so we go to our trim tool our scissors and we highlight click and click okay so we now have our basic shape and I'm going to leave that we will put some some radii on these corners but we're not going to for the moment so we're just going to leave it as our basic profile so we go to our green tick button say okay yep I'm happy with that and then if I right click and drag you can see that we have this shape attached to the plane there so at the moment, of course, it's just a drawing. It's just a two-dimensional drawing here. If I want to create a physical entity with that one, in this case, I'm going to extrude. I'll come up to the extrude button and click that. It says select face sketch region to extrude. So I hover over. And once it's highlighted, I click OK. There we go. So we now have a solid shape. It's a bit thick for a key ring. So let's click and edit that depth to three millimeters click enter and there we go we have our basic key ring shape so again green tick button to say yes I'm happy with that and there we go okay now we're going to now put some radii or some fillets onto this because as, as engineers or certainly designers we don't like things with sharp corners okay so we we like them to, to look nice and we also like them to feel nice so there's a button here well, there's two in fact so we can fill it to put a curve on or we can chamfer to actually put an angle on but but we want to put a fillet onto this so we click our fillet button it defaults to five millimeters which I think is about right for me now you have to be a little careful with this one because it will select areas or regions. If I selected this area, it would put a fillet on every edge attached to that. But I actually only want this one. And this is where I'll zoom into cursor is quite good. So if I put the cursor on this region, I can actually zoom right into it. Okay, and see it's just highlighted this edge. So this is all the one I want to put a fillet on. So I click to select. If that's so gone okay. Can I say okay with that? All right. 
And so that's now giving me a nice round. And it's much easier than drawing circles and or putting a radius on it and dimensioning it and then having to edit it later. Okay, it's a much more powerful way of doing it. So the next job I want to do is create a hole in here because I need a hole to attach it uh, to my lanyard. And because we now have a flat faces, we can actually put sketches directly onto those faces. So I can put a sketch on any flat face. I could put a sketch onto this face, onto the top face if I want to, if I want to start adding features onto there. So rather than use planes in this case, I'm going to select this face. And I'm going to say sketch onto that face. There we go. So again, right click, view normal. Um, and I could draw a circle on here and then extrude that through. But again, I'm just going to put a reference point on here. Okay, So I'm going to put a point on here. And it's it's going to help me again. It's going to say, uh, you know, do you want it horizontal to this point? Or in fact, you know, if I wanted to, do you want it vertical to that point? And you can see there's a little constraint line that appears. But what I actually want is, I want it in the center of this radius. And if I just slowly drag out without pressing any buttons, see it gives me this reference. And you can see almost like a little target here. It's telling me that is the center point of that radius. So if I click onto this, okay, it's now automatically put it at the center of this at the center of this radius. And if I escape out of that, if I hover onto this, it shows me what constraints I have and it will show me what it's constrained to, you see. Okay, so again, nice and simple. That's a sketch with just one point on, but that's absolutely fine. Okay. So I can now go to my hole command, and I just want a simple hole that goes through everything. So it says select sketch points to place holes. Just click on that hole, bang, okay, and it, and it, and it puts a hole in there for me. Okay. Um, five might be okay you might make it a bit smaller later on but for the time being we won't worry about that too much okay so again if i'm happy with that green check button and now you can see it's starting to look a bit like a key ring okay. we still have lots of edges to do though okay. so what i'm going to do next is these these lines going across here so i'm going to go to my fillet tool and I'm going to come in, I'm going to stay with my five, mili five millimeter fillet. I'll click on that one. And you can have a bit of practice panning and moving in accurately here. Okay, so make sure, just let it hover and then click that one. If if it does click something and you don't want it, the simplest thing is that you just go up uh, and then delete that one. Okay, so if you happen to select something you don't want. Okay. But obviously I do want that one. So again, we, we drag around. Uh, in this mode, you have to be able to see the edges. Okay, so I zoom into that edge. Yeah, thank you. And finally, this one. There we go. Okay. So if I'm happy with that, click OK. And there we go. We're kind of getting there. Now, we could almost leave it like that. But actually, we've still got this edge running around running around here. So I'm just going to do something about, about that. And we're going to put another fillet on here. But now, because this part's only 3 millimeters wide, I'm only going to put a, just a tiny little fillet, just to take the sharpness off it. So I'm going to go, let's say, 0.5. Okay. And if remember I said earlier that we don't actually have to select each section. If I select a face here, it will fill it every edge attached to that face, including the edge of the circle, the edge of the hole. Okay. So if I'm happy to have the same radius on there, I can simply click, click a face. And I can do the same the other side because I want it symmetrical. So I let it highlight that face, click, it will calculate, bang, there we go. So this is now our key ring blank. And it looks nice. Hopefully it'll feel quite nice to the touch because we don't have any sharp edges on it any, anywhere. Okay. But I said at the start of this, we're going to personalize this. So 
what I would like you to do is I would like you to actually put your name in it. So we're gonna we're gonna actually make a solid part with your name in, which again with this with this software is much easier than it sounds. We don't need to draw every part of the lettering of that painful process of putting this in. So we start off again with a sketch. So we highlight the face, select face, and sketch. Again, right click. I wish sometimes it would just snap to normal, but there we go. Okay. And if you've looked at the toolbar up here, you'll notice there's a text button here. And it allows us to directly enter text, but text as a sketch. Okay, so if you click on this, first thing we need to do is to put a, a box in. Okay. And you might need to play with this depending on how long your name is or what text you want to put in. We have some different fonts not a great selection but hey there's enough to get on with you can go bold italic play around with it if you want um, but I'm simply going to take my name not a simple Gary and say okay with that okay now it's made it a little large right so I'm gonna need to okay now if it's too big what you need to do is you'll need to put a dimension on it okay so we're going to dimension that take that corner take that corner and we probably don't want that box to be much bigger than let's say 35 let's just see what it looks like yeah okay that's 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 okay for me so again I'm happy with that sketch so I say okay and now what I have is it's drawn my name on there Okay, as a sketch and in the same way that we extruded the sketch that we drew earlier to create this this shape I can now extrude that so I hit the extrude button hover over so it highlights my name and click now of course it's extruded at 25 millimeters which is slightly impractical for a key ring but that looks interesting if we just go one millimeter it doesn't need to be very big just enough to read it so we've now got one millimeter raised lettering on there. So I click OK. Look at that. OK. So we now have our personalized key ring. You may want this lettering to be recessed if you want. So you can, it will actually go in. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. So if we go to extrude again, double click on this to edit it. So instead of adding material, we can remove material. So we can actually use this sketch to cut material away. If I click remove, now it's come up red and it says it doesn't like it because it's trying to remove in the same direction. And obviously there's just fresh air there. So we go to this little button here, this little arrow, it says opposite direction. We click that and it's going to change the direction. You can see it's cut into, into our key ring. So we press green check button and there we go. Okay, and that is the model of your personalized key ring. If you want to change the color of it, right click, edit appearance. We have various colors. You can go to color mixer palette if you like. And you can actually, it's almost like sort of a basic Photoshop -y kind of thing. You can actually click on that. Oh, look at that. Yeah. And our view cube to the top right here gives us other options. So if you want to get rid of these lines, in other words, make a smooth model, we can go to shaded without edges. There we go. Okay. And if you want to get rid of the planes, anything which has some vi visibility, if you hover over it, you'll see uh, an eye icon comes up. So if you click those, it will simply hide all the planes. They're still there because you can't delete them. But if you want to just look at your part and admire your work. Yeah. Okay, so have a, have a play with that. Uh, and once you've created them, we will look at how uh, exporting those files and, uh, and hopefully we can 3D print them all. Okay, have some fun.